I really like it. No. I need, I need like a feather boa. Mama moo. What does that mean? It means what? they're all really hot. That's what mama moo means. Now you've become part one of something new I'm trying out. I want you guys to try comparing songs with similar genre for a reaction episode rather than songs by the same artist. So in this episode, you'll be comparing six different Brazilian-influenced songs, i.e. bossa nova or samba-inspired pop tracks. So first you'll be reacting to the vocal queen's Mamamoo and their B-side song called Words Don't Come Easy. Queen. Words Don't Come Easy is from their studio album Melting, and it was released in 2016. The lyrics are about the difficulty of putting emotion into words. Go ahead. Three, two, one. Yeah, I can already feel the like, the syncopation vibe. Ooh, sax, there we go. That's a real saxophone doing that real saxophone smooth. things. That is smooth. No. I need like a feather boa. <clears throat> this is smooth. So it's definitely a bossa nova, but the drum set is playing a pop group, so it's like a hybrid. Mmm, very good melody. Weird intervals. Not weird, but like, you know, seventh, other stuff. And the second member brings a different personality to it, because her melody is literally written differently. <laughs> How many ways can you sing an upward scale, you know? It's great. The, it's that the drum groove yeah. and the bass are yeah. totally square against this clave rhythm that's happening in the guitar. I was just gonna say the sound of the drums. Oh, God. It's just like... It's like uh, super uh, tight. Uh, it's like super compressed. You'd expect it to be a little bit more like that, that. Bah, bah, and play into the rhythm of the clave rhythm more. But it just does not. Dude, I don't know, man. Those. <laughs> what's up? The choir background, the, sing, the vocal backgrounds. That's pretty smooth. <laughs> it would feel less smooth <laughs> if they didn't have this, this beat. That's true. That is true. It's got a nice groove though. Yeah. It's cute. She looks like a radish. I do like the song idea though. Like, I think their voices fit very well with what they're putting down. I would agree. Yeah. What they're what they're they're singing very well to what they're laying down. What? Oh. Hey. No, no. <laughs> Dude, this is a sexy voice. This is a cool change. I was needing a transition and like, I was enjoying it still, so they made this shift at a proper time. It's probably one of the lowest like voices I've heard. It's just kind now of like, now it's like boogie. What the hell? Tick 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 tick. I don't know. I really like it. It's a really great song. It's a really good song. Yeah. Sounds great. I like the chorus. I like her voice the most, actually. It is very. I think like, it's beautiful. It's like ethereal. Yeah, it's light. Man. Yeah. yeah. It's got a nice timbre. Lots of neighboring tones. Oh. All right, quick little little. What the heck? I enjoyed that very much. Wow, it just keeps going and repeats the same stuff. But I have to appreciate how.
crafty they are with each one of the vocalists because the girl that sings the most, most of the, I think, chorus. Because the other vocalists, aside from the rapping part, um, you can t distinctly tell, so, okay, it's a vocalist because they're articulating each and one of the words carefully. But when it comes to the chorus, it's just, it just mends so well. And I think that's one quality of the bossa nova. It's like you're going in a groove and then having a vocalist who has a timbre that reaches that softness that they're trying to go for, I thought it was, she almost she was almost like an instrument. Not to disrespect her or to discredit her as a human being, but it's just like, wow. Like to to be able to get to that range is hard. And then with the contrast of like with the rap section, I think these contrasts it's like it really brings out each and one of the elements that they're trying to push for. So it's like having that really nice, smooth and mellow section contrasted with very articulated uh, emphasis on the lyrics. In terms of the track as a B-side, there are kind of like three levels, you know, of, of B-sides. There's the one that you can clearly tell, like, draws, it sounds like every other song. The, the vocalists are just kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're not giving it their all because the songwriting is just, it doesn't showcase their voices a lot. And then there's a second level where, like, you have something interesting stylistically. The vocalist, it still sounds pretty generic. But then you have this song where like not only is the style interesting, but you're really exploring these these vocalists. You feel like they're giving it their all. They're making each melody, every line their own. And so this is like the best type of B-side song, I think. Especially for a slow song. Weird groove though. Yeah. Especially. I think it's because with Latin music, whenever you try to do it, the nature of that style is everything is has a very specific role. It's particularly, well, especially with the rhythm section. So when you try to mess with that, it sounds a little weird and it sounds forced. So yeah. I think that's why, you know, like with the drum groove, usually they would have something that would complement what the guitarist, the pattern that the guitarist is doing. Because it's more like everybody has their own rhythmic part and then it, they're all different, but they all are like rhythmic counterpoint against each other, you know, so it all makes sense. And when you tweak that, it kind of sounds a little weird, you know. Yeah. I would say it was a pretty convincing amalgamation, you know, of like all those different aspects. Yeah, I definitely felt like after a while, it's like, okay, it's like you, they, they catch you in this trance state. You're just like, all right, you're just like flowing. And then like at that point, when it was starting to get repetitive, I didn't even like realize what was going on. Then you just get like freaking smack. It gets in like that rap section. You're just like, it was like very jar, like a very jarring transition. It's like, bam. I mean, I loved her voice though. I don't know. There's something about it that just like really just like. Sure, it's in love. A very, sh a very sharp transition into the rap section. I was like, wait, wait a minute. Like you're in this, you're in this trance because you're caught in the vibe, and then all of a sudden the vibe very much changes. Yeah. And then you're just like, boom. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be comparing "Words Don't Come Easy" to uh, the soloist Yi Dong Wu and his beat side song called Ooh. "Marry Me." Off his walk yes. I like this guy like a lot. It. Marry Me represents a marriage proposal, but the Korean title translates to coffee tree. In the lyrics, he says he will hang a ring from the coffee tree for his proposal, and that his love will continue to grow like that coffee tree until he is buried under it. <laughs> that's so random. Coffee tree coffee is the tree. perfect place for shade, and that's just how I feel. Uh. Yeah, see, so like for this, <laughs> listen to what the, like the drummer is playing a, like a specific bossa nova pattern. It, it's so elevator music. I, I just can't. It is, yeah. I like the rhythm section a lot. Yeah, this is like, this is Brazilian influenced for sure. Yeah. But then you got kind of what I would consider like a more traditional jazz trumpet yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. I, I love the piano player. Yeah. Like, I, I like those fills. It's like, it's fitting the style really well, but you can tell that there are like modern influences into the way he like does his ornamentations and stuff. Oh my god, different key, different. Because the last time he sang this, it had a twist, but this time it's a different twist. Oh, wow. I like, I have to say, it's pretty harmonically consistent, which I like. Plus also, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's upright bass, which is cool, you know? You don't always get that, that's nice. The texture is like very thick and very atmospheric, mm -hmm. I feel like. 
because you've got like the the kind of like quiet muted brass sections and then you've got like the piano and the vibraphone and the rhythm section and then you've got like backup singers giving like harmonic support via stacked chords in the voice yeah I really like the instrumentation Real instruments, yeah! I like his voice too. It's major 7. Ooh. Yeah! Are we ever gonna go to minor again? The minor, the relative minor. I don't think so. It's just back to home key, but it sounds so so different and fresh. I wish someone would sing to me and propose to me like that. One day. Man. <laughs> bass drum pattern is actually really authentic too to a bass to like. Bass play. That's impressive because most people don't do that. Where it's like. I don't want it to stop, man. So you have to do that. <laughs> you have about 20 seconds left, buddy. Oh, <laughs> the symbol. <laughs> oh, the violin trill. Man. Wow, you really hated that, didn't you? Yeah, that sucked. You've never yeah. just randomly yelled during a game before. <laughs> it's because it was good. Yeah. It was subtle what they were doing. It was triggering just like this, this un a yell, this yeah, this <laughs> response. Mine. He couldn't, he couldn't scream. help it. I mean, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. That was like was just such a great place to just ex just be in my head and ex like such a great sound to, like sounds to experience. It was like he's got such a great, you know, charismatic voice and like Michael way. Buble. Yeah, Korean Michael Buble. Let's this. I love Michael Buble. I think that's what you said really? last time you leave. Yeah, probably. Tuesdays. Really? I like him. Dude, his voice is so time. much better. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I, I, I like Michael Buble. Let's not talk about that anymore. And I like Fun. this guy. I like them Fight. both. Fight. Yeah. First of all, the instrumentation was awesome. Really clever use of like big band ish instruments, like just the flute, like it's like da, 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 da. it was just so good. Like the timbre was perfect. Man, I'm not having a hard time here. It's just so consistent and it's so convincing. And those aren't even real things to say. It's just kind of arbitrary, but I really liked it. It just really resonated with you, Colin. Oh, shut up. How about that? Wow. It was just a trip. You just hear him just hovering around doing sequences. You just keep changing and it just keeps morphing so you don't know where it's going and then the sudden leap to other keys It's justified because you have this uh, Alteration or almost like a foreshadow before mentioning it's like hey, we're gonna change keys I'm a big fan of the structure of this. It's basically the same thing twice But um first time, you know, you have your more generic Going from a flat major to F minor and then oh surprise we're in B major for a short bit and but then for the rest of the song that particular chord progression never comes back and then after the chorus there's this you can call it a post chorus you can call it a bridge that appears twice but regardless it kind of it, it solidifies the song and in that way the 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 main chorus only has to repeat twice and you don't need that third time to potentially cause fatigue to the listener mm. um, by putting in that bonus section each time it yeah, it kind of makes it more compact, but also makes it equally fulfilling. Oh my gosh, there's just so many little <coughs> instruments with their special little riffs and like twinkly sounds, like the drums, the piano, the trumpet, everything <coughs> came together to support his voice in the vocal line. Like it painted a picture of what his voice was going to do. It just made me so happy hearing all the legit instruments doing their thing very well. Good job to those who like recorded it. 
It's comfortable like, to listen to. Yeah, That's comfortable. what I like about it, is it makes you feel comfy. I kind of like the first one more. That's okay. Why? Did you like the voice echoing? Yeah, or like just the fact that there was like more of them, or like more. Okay, yeah. More of a palette of like voices to hear mm-hmm. than just like one guy. And then also they had like, you know, rap in there. And like, True. I thought it was more of an ad, adi- like a modern adaptation of Bossa Nova style. I thought that this was better in terms of texture. I also felt this was better in terms of actually like creating a more diverse aural palette, if you will. Horn backgrounds, they also weren't afraid to have like a, an actual acoustic bass player filling at the bottom. The drums were tuned well and recorded okay. And they had extra percussion, which was nice. I don't know, it sounded like more complete to me. I think they're kind of complimentary. They're kind of like day and night because Mama Moose is in B minor, it's a very sad key. But in this in this context, it's a very sexy key. You have the nightlife, you have the mystery, the darkness. This next one, you know, we're just singing about coffee trees. Yay, you know? I really like the selection of these two paired together. Hello everyone, I'm Umu, React to the K channel creator, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed or learned something from it. If you'd like to support us or help React to K grow, you can do so by visiting our Patreon and help us out by pledging any amount you can. Till next time.